I have heard the cries and the screams for help. And I'm on the way. Let's get to it. A Reddit user named G++ ran into an issue while reversing a CrackMe from CrackMe's.1 called basic. Since the password is saved as a local variable, Deidre does not count it as a null terminated C string, which makes it very difficult to find when using Ghidra. Even more, it decompiles as little Indian, so even if you were to find it and throw it in a decoder, the password would be backwards. So here's a quick tip on how to get it into a human readable format. I will be using Ubuntu 22.04 inside of a virtual box, but hey, feel free to use whatever operating system you wish. The workflow will be the same. And of course, you can pick up Ghidra, which is developed by the NSA at this link below. I make software development and reverse engineering content for fun. So let me know what you think. And if you like the content, the like, subscribe, and and do all the great, awesome, wonderful YouTube things. And check out my other YouTube videos for more geeky fun. But hey, that's enough talking about it. Let's jump into it. All right, here we are inside of my Ubuntu virtual box. And I already got the basic CrackMe up on CrackMe's.1. So we're going to go ahead and go through it the same way that uh, he did on Reddit. So first things first, let's get the payload. I'm going to click download here. We got it. Let's double check our folder, make sure it's there. It is there. Then let's go ahead and pop this bad boy open. See if we can pull that out. Extract, let me click extract. I'm gonna extract it to the desktop. So I'm gonna go dev. I'm gonna put it on desktop for now, extract. Then the password is gonna be crack me dot ones if I type that incorrect. All right, it's gonna be this right here. Let's go ahead and copy that. Let's try that again. And bam, paste. All right, it is successfully extracted. And I'm gonna minimize this. I'm gonna bring this up here so it's in a place that I like it to be. All right, so now we have it here. I always like to rename everything. Um, sometimes on Ubuntu, you can run an exe file on windows. You can definitely run an exe file, but you can't run an ABC file accidentally. So I'm going to rename it to ABC. You can rename it to whatever you want. All right. Then let's go to pop open Ghidra, start a new project. Not shared project is fine. I'm going to call it B A S I K. When I first saw this, I thought it was basilisk, not basic, but now that I look at it, is clearly basic. So it's going to uh, open it up. It is going to be a PE. That is correct. It is going to be in an X64, little Indian 64 default Windows language. And the destination folder is going to be the folder we created, Basculus. Click OK on that. And then here is more information on it as well. This pretty much says the same thing that we saw earlier. It's Windows x86 architecture, little Indian 64 uh, bit and a lot more information. Uh, it looks like it is going to, that it was compiled with GCC. Let's click OK and let's open it up. You can double click on it or you can always drag it up to the little Ghidra Dragon. Both are fine. All right, so it has not been analyzed. You want to analyze it now. We're going to go ahead and click Yes. And every time I do this, I always like to do the Windows PE x86 propagation of external parameters. I always like to have that in there. It helps us out with it. All right, at the very bottom right, right underneath my picture, you're gonna see that we're currently uh, going through the auto analytical process. And there we are, it's done. So this came up really easy for me. If, if you're using uh, Linux, sometimes Windows, but definitely Linux, and you pop up and it is just blank, that's perfectly fine, don't freak out. Just come up here to file, go to open, and then just open it again and then everything will populate properly as it's supposed to. All right, for me in the dead center, I got my listings and also got my decompile window. A lot, of, a lot of people will have the decompile window on this side right here. What I like to do is I drag it to the center and I have it here and it's really easy to display this way. And it already took me to the main function, but if it did not take you to the main function, 
we can get there by coming to exports and double clicking the main CRT. Once you're in the main CRT, let's look at the decompile. And the main the main C runtime is where all everything that the C program needs to even be a C program, that's where it starts its run up. So we're gonna come in here at the T main CRT startup. We're gonna double click on that. And then it's gonna bring us into here. If it doesn't look like an actual program, that's fine. Just keep on scrolling down to the bottom. Once again, this is where everything starts up. But the last thing this function is gonna do is launch the actual program, what the, what the user has coded in. So at the very bottom, I see main right here in which it has a main return. Let's double click on that and it takes us right to where we wanna go. So this is the main function. Uh, you can also get there. Let me see, is it, does it have a Let's see if it's also underneath these labels. There is a main function underneath the functions folder here as well. So you can also get into main through there. I like my way better. All right, let me go ahead and clean this up a little bit because I like everything to be dress right dress. All right, come back down here. I'm gonna go back into the main. All right, so this is indeed more or less the entirety of the user coded program. If we see we have main here in which it receives the, the number of arguments, the actual arguments themselves, and then the environment variable. We have a local uh, integer defined here and a local undefined section here. All right. Here we have a random number of hex characters. Then we have a compare right here that compares what the argument is of the first index, which is going to be you know what is written into the actual program on the command line if you're using Windows. And then it compares it against this right here to see if these two equal. So if these two equal, we'll get a zero to symbolize success. But if there's any difference in between these, this will show what the difference is, which you know might be one or two or three characters. And then it will come down here and print out the wrong password. So the thing is, is that this right here, which is being compared to what the user is going to put in, is what tells us whether it's right or wrong. So this is, for lack of a better term, the password. So what we're going to do is we're going to come right here. We're going to double click on this. Whenever we double click in the decompiler, it takes us to the same place in the listing. So if we check out the listing, it brings us right here. And this looks like a mumbled a pile of garbage. But if we look right above it, this is what we actually saw when we were looking at the decompiled view. Let's come back over here to decompile, make sure that it's correct. That's, that's where we believe that the password is because it is doing that string compare with success and wrong password. And so we really do believe, uh oh, I clicked around in here. So of course my listing moved. So we really do believe that this is what we want, but it is not easily, easily readable. So what we can do is we can hover above it and we can see that when we hover above it, we do get this little pop-up that says character array. And it looks like the word pizza written backward. Um, luckily it's in an English word that we can read and we can understand this pizza backwards, but if it was just a random series of letters, we wouldn't be able to tell if it was forward or backwards. We can clearly see this is backward. So for example, if we were to copy this and take it and put it over into Cyber, Cyber Chef, in which there will be a link down below me in the description for Cyber Chef. It is an amazing tool. You can do so many things. If we were to paste that in here, and then ask for it to go from hex, in which we would just drag it over here into the recipe, and we were to bake it, we would see that pizza is backwards. Not very helpful for us. So. Here is the quickest solution that I found. I did post a solution on Reddit using Python scripting, and I highly suggest you go check that out. It's a great way to learn Python scripting. It might even be a future video. But since then, I found out something else. Idra decompiled this and put it into a format that it thought was readable to us. Since it is not actually written as a static, as a static string, Gidra doesn't have it here in the defined strings as we see on the right side of our computer. Um, so it doesn't have it there. This is 
This is written in as a local variable. So Ghidra compile or decompiles it as a little Indian. So what we need to do is we need to undo all the decom all the decompilation that Ghidra has done. And the way we do that is to left click on it and click clear bytecodes. So we still know that 48 is the move bytecode. And we do know that B8 is the move bytecode into um, RAX. Let's go ahead and just assemble that and double check. Yep, move bytecode into RAX. Let me go ahead and clear the bytecodes. So this, these are our instructions, but this, this is our null terminated C string. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on it and we're gonna to go to data. And we're gonna make it a terminated C string. And just like that, it is very easy for us to read it now. It is clearly pizza. And furthermore, if you look over here in the fine strings on the right side, it has populated the word pizza into our now clearly defined strings. From what I heard, it's really easy to find the password pizza in Binary Ninja and uh, in, in Ida and in just normal strings command. For some reason, Ghidra doesn't do that, but it's very easy for us to do it. Speaking of pizza, I am this close from being monetized on YouTube. So I ask for your assistance in that. Jump onto YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe, and check out my other videos. And hey, if you got any questions, reach out to me. Reach out to me on Reddit. I do a lot of stuff there. I'm always on the Ghidra forums and reverse engineering forums. Or shall I say the reverse engineering subreddit and the, and the Ghidra subreddit. All right, uh, reach out to me. Ask me if you have any questions. Hey, and until then, keep reversing.